I'm doing pretty good. It is, it is a nice, warm, 88 degree summer day. There's a lot of bugs. Little bugs called noceums that you can't see and they just get in your skin and they bite you and it feels like some out of a sci-fi movie. Um, but it's, it's a really great breeze right now, so that's good. Sun's going down, so it's not quite so hot at the moment. This is the road to nowhere, my friends. Like, literally, it's Mars on Earth is, is what the road to nowhere is. This is a little like, it's kind of a little legend near Steenhatchee, Florida. Everybody knows about the, the road to nowhere that takes you out to this just like endless expanse of emptiness that eventually leads you to the coast, the ocean's over there. So it's like way over that way. Gorgeous spot to come watch the sun go down because it sets in the west, so it's perfect. I've been working on my record, All It Does Is Rain, for probably like two years or so. And it, I've been recording in Waycross, Georgia with a friend of mine named Justin Mercer with Caution Light Media. And um, it's just a home studio at his place. It's really cool. I love the way we recorded. It felt really real. It felt like comfortable. I was in a closet that we made like into a vocal booth and stuff. And like we set up like all these blankets and stuff. And I just kind of stood there and like played the guitar and sang songs and uh, played everything live. And it was just really comfortable. It felt really natural. It was a, it was a great way to do it. I, I enjoyed it a lot. And um, it feels good to finally be at a point where it's done. You know, it's done, it's ready to go, and it's, it's been a long time coming, and I'm really proud of it and really excited about it. It releases June the 27th. I moved down to Nashville, Georgia when I was about 13 years old, and it was a major culture shock because I was living in Michigan previously, so it was a huge difference from up there. But I immediately kind of started falling in love with, with the area, and mostly like the outdoors of the area. There's like the Spanish moss hanging and the cypress knees and like the dark water on the rivers and swamps. It's like a very eerie kind of look. I don't know. It's always felt good to be in that kind of setting. But it's, it's, it's just beautiful down here. And I cried tears that you were meant to cry, but I deserve every drop. In Memories and Scars, there's a line that I told you that says, I cried tears that you were meant to cry, but I deserved every drop. So it's, that song's really kind of a part of my life, at least personally, where I was feeling very guilty for the way I had treated somebody that I was with at the time. And um, I Cried Tears That You Were Meant To Cry is kind of playing on the fact that I felt like I was a victim in the situation where it was actually the other way around. The other person was the victim. And thinking about it later on, you know, you realize that, oh my gosh, you know, I kind of messed up. Um, so it's really, that, that song's about guilt. It's, a, it's about feeling like there's a better way I could have handled that situation than what I did and uh, acknowledging that. Songwriting for me has been extremely cathartic. It's, it's basically my form of therapy and getting complex thoughts out of my head onto paper and into a song with a melody and stuff like that behind it to where it's just an expression of kind of what's been going on in my head. I don't know, it would be, it would be hard to look at me in person and be like, that guy writes really sad songs. But when you hear the songs, you're like, oh gosh, there's some like deep stuff going on here. Um, but like I said, it's just more of a, it's getting those complex thoughts out. And that's the reason why I feel like I am able to be an extremely happy person is because I am able to get those thoughts out and kind of send them off. You know, send them on their way and uh, get it out there into the world where I don't have to dwell on it so hard in my own head. Um, because it, before songwriting, I can remember times where it just gets in there. It's just like it's stuck in your head and you have no way to release it and it drives you a little bit crazy. So writing songs kind of takes that away and it gives you a sense of like freeness. When you have something that's bothering you, you're able to write, write about it and then, then the feeling's like gone. I don't know, it's really, it's interesting. Live shows are honestly like there's just nothing that compares to playing live music out in like the world. I don't know. You get to play music in front of strangers. Maybe people have never heard your songs before and you're able to see you're able to like see the resonance within people sometimes like where you maybe a certain part of a song is clicking with them and you know that it is. You can see it in their eyes and the way they're paying attention and that's at that moment you become not alone in your thoughts and not alone in what you were singing about and then I feel like they're feeling that too. So 
playing like live shows for me is just such a cathartic experience in itself because you're able to share a moment with people that you don't even know. You're able you're able to share something special with them, you know, and uh, it's just a, it's a beautiful thing to do. I feel like love is probably one of the most complex emotions that exists. So love can be extremely terrible. Love can be beautiful. That probably sounds extremely cliche, but I feel like it's the truth. There's so many aspects about love that are like just confusing in my head at least. And you can really love somebody and when you really love somebody, I feel like you're opening the door also to immediately become more disappointed in somebody about something that they've done that maybe is just something totally human that you can't really control that everybody does anyways. But when you allow someone to have like that impact on you, then you're more easily disappointed. And then also you are going to more easily disappoint somebody else who loves you too. And it's just a, it's a really complex relationship to have love with somebody, whether it be, you know, you're in love with somebody because you're in a relationship with them or you love someone how you love your parents or you love your siblings or something like that, or you just love a friend. You know, there's so many different variations of love and that's kind of what I've known love is about. It's, it's about all the complexities of love and what it is and what it means and why it is. I don't know, it's just a, it's kind of a wild idea. Um, it says, I've known love, there's a line that says, I've known love as a blessing and I've known love as a curse. I can't decide which one is worse. Um, and that's that that perfectly encompasses what i tried to explain i feel like where it's like it is such a complex issue it's confusing and i wrote the song and afterwards it's still confusing you know what i mean but it's there's still that comfort in getting it out and writing it out and just being like this is how i feel about it here it is you may or may not feel that way about it too but just getting it out there helps me feel a whole lot better about it all it does is rain releases on june the 27th um, of 2020 this year, which is a Saturday. You can find my music on Spotify or anywhere you listen to music. Thank you for doing it, man. I appreciate it.